so now I want to introduce someone who I'm very excited about. Um, Gail McLaughlin is mayor of Richmond, California, and has been, she's had two terms as mayor, and she's just completing her second term, and she's termed out, so she's running for city council again, which I think is great. She's very dedicated to her community. Um, under her leaderships over the past eight years, Richmond is leading in the Bay Area for solar installations per capita, and her city has earned countless awards for its model green jobs training program. Violent crime has decreased 66% since Gail has been mayor. And this is quite profound in Richmond. Yeah, it's worth applauding. Gail also is mayor, uh, as a Green Party member, is, is uh, I think Richmond is the largest city in the country that has a Green Party mayor. So we're also proud of her for that. And um, she's committed to social, economic, and environmental justice. Gail is at the helm of the largest city, as I mentioned, with the U.S., with the Green Party mayor. She has been elected twice and uh, without the benefits of corporate money. She doesn't take corporate money, and she, yet she's still elected. Uh, she co-founded the Richmond Progressive Alliance and Solar Richmond, and she has been a strong ad advocate for new economic structures, which include worker-owned cooperatives. So please welcome Mayor Gail McLaughlin. Well, thank you. Thank you all for inviting me. Thank you to Praxis Peace. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you for everyone participating in this event, um, everyone here that uh, has, um, is allowing me to have this opportunity to speak to you today. It's a pleasure to share with you some of the background, the vision, the accomplishments we've made in Richmond over the past 10 years, as well as some of the critical challenges that we face this election year. A brief history of our progressive work in Richmond is in order to give a bit of a framework for how our city is in transformation. For those of you who may not be from California, Richmond is right across the bay from uh, San Francisco. Um, we're a city, uh, predominantly people of color community, a city of uh, about 104,000 people. So, in addition to serving the people of Richmond over uh, the past 10 years, first as a council member for two years and over the last eight years as mayor, I'm also a founding member of the Richmond Progressive Alliance, which is, um, which is an alliance of people of various political affiliations working for social and political change. For some reason my glasses are giving me trouble today. So, new glasses. So, um, we are committed to making progressive change in our city and as such showing what a mobilized urban community can do to challenge the corporate system and bring about healthy change for our residents. By running progressive candidates and supporting progressive elected officials, alongside building a, a mobilization of progressive activists, we have been able to show a new and different direction for politics in Richmond. We currently have two elected officials um, serving on the city council, myself and Vice Mayor Jovanka Beckles, who have won our elections, all our elections. I ran three elections. Um, Jovanka um, actually ran twice, won once, re, you know, her current uh, election back that she's finishing right now. Um, we won all our elections without a dime of corporate money. Since we've been elected, we focused our efforts on supporting our challenged neighborhoods, whereas in the past, these neighborhoods were told to wait, you know, saying that there would be trickle-down benefits, but of course, that never made it to their way. So we have moved our city in a green and sustainable way and assured that our residents are trained for new green jobs through our nationally acclaimed green job training program. And in the last year, since I've been in elected office working with all segments of the community, Richmond has undergone a remarkable transformation. We have garnered national attention as a city brave enough to take bold and innovative approaches to chronic problems. Together, we feel proud as a community that can recognize the good results that we've achieved and we want to achieve more. As uh, was stated by Georgia, we've experienced a dramatic decrease in our crime. 
We have the we had the lowest homicide number in 33 years last year, and this year we're on target for even being lower. Our property crimes are also down. Our property crimes are down 20 percent, and they're trending down even lower this year. So um, we're doing this by addressing the roots of our crime. We're doing this by having a community-involved police force and prevention programs. We're helping advance opportunities for returning parolees, and we're intervening with at-risk youth. All this is putting us on the map as a model city for reducing crime. We're shedding our reputation as a city known for its high crime. We also focus on environmental justice, and we have and we have led with so many initiatives, um, sh and just a few to name would be our community gardens, our bike paths, our bay trail construction, our park renovations throughout the city. In terms of advancing solar, Richmond was, and Georgia noted this, we were noted as um, a leading city in the Bay Area for installing solar per person. We also played a leading role by um, by banning solar, I'm sorry, by banning styrofoam and plastic bags before, of course, the state has, uh, has done this. Um, and we've won awards for all our green job training programs. So given the decades of poverty, though, in Richmond, it's paramount that economic development and jobs take center stage while we promote a better environment. So toward that end, in 2007, we joined other East Bay cities, other mayors and leaders in a, wilded, in a wildly heralded partnership for an East Bay Green Corridor, which um, had as its mich mission to become the economic engine for the new green economy. And this helped us in Richmond jumpstart and publicize the efforts that we were already working on toward um, greening our city and our sustainability efforts. Then, in 2012, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, now known as, well, this, its second campus, which will be coming to Richmond, we now call the Richmond Bay Campus, agreed to build this new second campus in Richmond, which will bring thousands of new jobs and new businesses to Richmond. Recently, I was a sponsor of Richmond's successful ordinance that will raise the minimum wage to $13, the highest in the Bay Area. With a, with a phase-in period and annual adjustable cost of living increases. All of these initiatives and projects are part of the great vision that is outlined in our general plan, which we worked on for a long time to reflect the city's new healthy, sustainable, and equitable direction for our residents. And it's always been clear to me that economics and environment go hand in hand. If you disregard the environment, it will come back and bite you because you will have to clean up the degradation that you disregarded in the first place. So that will require more resources. So the, the more economically sound approach is to consider environment in all policies, in all development, in all approaches um, as you develop or economically um, move forward a plan in your city or in your um, state, country, in the globe at large. Um, as a progressive movement, we've also protected, so we have protected our natural resources as we've mo moved forward by way of protecting our open shorelines. We've pushed for comprehensive cleanup of toxic land because we do have a lot of toxic land in Richmond as Richmond has been, had a heavy industry past, and these heavy industries, many of them have left Richmond and they've left, but left their toxins behind. Um, we also opposed an unhealthy, ill-conceived development, um, many, many uh, developments, but most notably um, one that was, um, what was proposed was a Las Vegas-style casino for a beautiful peninsula in Richmond called Point Malati. So we defeated the casino project, which many in the council were supporting, took a community effort once again, and now we're moving forward with sustainable 
a sustainable vision. And we started out by, op um, by reopening Point Malati Beach, which is a beautiful beach, and we expect to move a wonderful sustainable plan for all of Point Malati and expect many visitors to see what Richmond has to offer at this, this jewel of a site. As a city council, we took action to assist Kennedy High School and other Richmond schools with $6 million. Even though we do not have control over the school district, we helped to keep schools open because we know that neighborhood schools allow students to do better. So, um, you know, merging schools is not the solution for our kids' learning experience. But now we need to do more. We need to implement community schools to fill in the major gaps that the school district is not providing. Community schools can be a hub of learning in our neighborhoods with mentoring of our youth, adult education, uh, parenting classes, training of volunteers to help our youth, uh, right, to help our youth so they can truly rise and flourish in a supported uh, learning environment. Recently, we established, I brought forward an initiative which was approved by the City Council to establish a youth council um, so that our youth can serve as an advisory body to the City Council and raise their voices in terms of policy making and uh, project development. So these are some of the many things that we're doing. And in terms of the immigrant community, in Richmond, one out of four residents are foreign born. Um, nearly 40% of our community is Latino, about 27% African American, but among the Latino community in particular, um, we have a, a large segment of immigrants. So uh, we have, we made it clear when the first week or the first month when I was mayor in 2007, there were ICE raids. So um, I immediately brought forward a resolution uh, to um, reaffirm, because we already had a policy in place, but to reaffirm the um, a, a non-cooperation approach with ICE uh, from our local police. And so this, this resolution successfully passed. Our police chief was for it. We have a good police department, community involved, and uh, so there is no cooperation between our local police and ICE. I also went to D.C. to um, to testify on behalf of families that were impacted by these ICE raids. So we've become known as a community that values the rights of our immigrant community. We had study sessions with DREAMers, providing information on the work they are doing. And just last week, we had the ribbon cutting for our Richmond Municipal ID program. So this is a, a program that will, that will issue IDs to anyone in the city of Richmond. Um, regardless of immigration status, because everyone deserves the right to services. It also has an optional debit card service on it so people can um, access um, funds, have banking services, and they won't have to keep their money in their pockets and be susceptible to um, robberies or whatever. We think everyone has a right to services, safety, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a way to make our community feel connected um, so that people feel trust, uh, helping with um, relationship building with the police as well, so people will report more crimes and we continued on the downward um, trend of crime as we have already um, been doing. We also pushed for fair taxation from large corporations like Chevron. Chevron is the largest corporation in our city, um, a massive uh, oil refinery. It's the largest oil refinery in the state of California. We um, compelled them to pay more taxes, achieved a $114 million tax settlement with them over 15 years. Now we're currently suing Chevron for damages from the massive 2012 fire at its refinery. And I have made it clear that we must call on Chevron to create a new corporate culture by putting the health and safety of Richmond residents before its profits. So, uh, a few months ago, we approved an environmental impact report for a new Chevron project. Now we have to make sure it lives up to its commitment to build the safest and cleanest refinery that, that it possibly can. So I am uh, looking forward to overseeing them every step of the way on that. Um, <laughs> we have prioritized the interest of Richmond re residents and families in housing, advocating for residents evicted by bank speculators and approving policies to hold banks accountable. 
And currently, I'm very, very proud to be leading Richmond and standing up to Wall Street and for my community with the Richmond CARES program. This is a foreclosure prevention program that is seeking to acquire severely underwater mortgages in Richmond from the banks, either voluntarily or, if necessary, through eminent domain, so that the city can um, can refinance these loans in line with the current values of the homes. So this is a program that's reached uh, nat national attention, but we know that the, the focus, the need, is, is so ever-present in so many communities, and that's why people are captivated by this. Fixing the foreclosure crisis and restoring home equity will help the entire city of Richmond, or any city, um, by protecting the local economy, neighborhoods, and home values. Keeping people in their homes helps neighborhoods, helps families, creates less blight in your neighborhoods because you don't have vacant homes. Um, and of course, it, reducing the principal allows people to have more money in their pockets so they can frequent local businesses and help our whole local economy thrive. So. Another initiative we are moving forward is the pr um, promotion of worker-owned cooperatives. In 2010, I had the opportunity to go to Mondragon, Spain um, with Praxis Peace. Thank you uh, to Georgia for uh, helping me have that opportunity. And we learned about and this interesting strategy for job creation, worker empowerment, and local wealth building. The trip was phenomenal. We saw firsthand how worker owners were organizing their cooperative structure and their lifestyle. We heard them speak of how their sense of value was more important to them. Their sense of values was more important to them than the rule of money. We learned how co-op members determine maximum salaries and how layoffs were unheard of. In short, we learned how the co-op model is preserved and how it grows for the benefit of all. So we came back to Richmond, and uh, we promoted and created worker-owned co-ops in our city. And we realized that the values we have in Richmond, which are values of um, economic, social, and environmental justice, were right in line with the principles of um, worker co-ops. People, it resonated with people. Our values connected from the information and the experience that I brought back from Mondragon. We began building and deepening relationships within co with co uh, cooperative organizations and networks throughout the state and region, and we set up visits for our Richmond residents to visit co-ops. It's a process in, in building people's understanding of what they can actually do by, by uh, creating such a, a business strategy. We've since seen the rise of co-ops such as the Liberty Ship Cafe and Fusion Latina, both catering services providing healthy food, which we frequently contract with for city events. We also have a solar installation co-op formed by the graduates of our Green Job Training Program. Um, as a city, we have opportunities to give co-ops a boost by providing them extra points um, on their bids for contracts that um, they, uh, they may you know, be seeking with the city. There are also residents involved with creating a bike co-op and an urban agriculture co-op. And so in, in order to help them further with development of co-ops, we have a, a Richmond uh, worker co-op revolving loan fund to help with seed money. So these sustainable businesses are the beginning of how um, we can showcase a city that not only encourages businesses, but displays a full commitment to uh, workplace democracy. All this is a part of the transformation of Richmond that we must continue. From renovating parks to creating worker co-ops, we are bringing about a local economy of sustainability. And we know that healthy businesses of all kinds flock to cities that have quality of life with good schools, parks, um, cities that are really valuing um, quality of life, cities that are really valuing health. So uh, because of our quality of life projects and, and uh, values and efforts in the city, we have brought in many green businesses, clean tech businesses, high tech businesses. And we know that these are 21st century businesses. And we know we have the willing workforce. So the connections are there in Richmond. You have a workforce ready and willing to um, participate in these businesses. 
In the past, we were known as a company town. Well, we don't want our economy dominated by one massive oil company. We understand that diversity, diversity is the way to a healthy economy. We have a diverse community, a majority people of color community, and we are turning the tide from the experience of decades of economic injustice. We are poised for expanded progressive, progressive economic development enrichment. We are located in one of the most beautiful areas of the Bay with more shoreline than any city around the San Francisco Bay. We have multi modes of transportation from BART, AC Transit, Amtrak, bike paths, and we will soon have a ferry. But building our local economy of sustainability is not the momentum, the continuity, the future is not assured. I've mentioned that we've compelled Chevron, whose um, Richmond refinery is the largest in California, to come up with some reductions of emissions. Well, Chevron has not only polluted our air, they are polluting our elections. This election year in particular, Chevron has outdone itself. It is spending two to three million dollars to defeat the progressive movement in Richmond. They are sending out hit pieces on me and two other candidates I'm running with as part of a slate. Our slate is called Team Richmond. And let me tell you, people's mailboxes are inundated with mailers promoting Chevron-friendly candidates and attacking me and my colleagues in Team Richmond, Chovanka Beckles and Eduardo Martinez. Chevron's latest strategy is to put up hit piece billboards. You may have seen some of them on 580 driving through Richmond. They are attacking me because I took a five-day trip to Ecuador without a dime of taxpayer money. I took this trip to see the, hor the horrific damage to the Ecuadorian Amazon rainforest committed by Chevron Texaco and the impact on the health and lifestyle of the indigenous community. I took this because it is important to build solidarity and relationships with others who suffer similar impacts. But this apparently rubbed Chevron the wrong way. The indigenous community of Ecuador is suing the city, uh, suing Chevron. The city of Richmond is suing Chevron. I guess they don't want us communicating with each other. So, so why is Chevron so threatened by the progressive movement of Richmond? Well, I think we all know the answer to that question. It's clear that a, that a progressive community with progressive elected officials are holding them accountable. And Chevron would feel far more comfortable with city council members that rubber stamp anything and everything that they want. But we are not afraid to stand up to the soil behemoth. We know that the Chevron Richmond refinery is the highest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions in the state of California. And along with those greenhouse gas emissions, this refinery still emits other pollutants as well. And it's clear that we still live with the fear and the risk of more fires, like the fire of 2012. But we are proud in Richmond to join with, with the climate justice movement, which holds so many of its rallies and marches in our city. We've had 3,000 people march in Richmond from the center of the city to the refinery to protest this mega oil company's damage to the people and to our planet. And on top of all the impacts it creates, Chevron does not even hire many of our residents. Only five to seven percent of their workforce are Richmond residents. So we are truly facing a critical balance, uh, battle in Richmond this electoral season. And I encourage everyone to join us. If you live in the area, please volunteer in these last weeks of this critical campaign. Check out teamrichmond.net to learn how to volunteer or to donate to our efforts. Richmond, <coughs> Richmond is ground zero, a local battle that must be won. Saving the planet from climate change is an epic battle, global in scope. Worldwide, oil companies hurt communities on the ground and destroy the atmosphere above. Chevron makes $2.5 billion in profits on its Richmond refinery alone. And we still have 
18% of our community living at or below the poverty level. Make no mistake about it, when Richmond wins, grassroots environmental organizations will be strengthened as the most reliable last defense against the oil industry's efforts to dismantle AB 32. Poor communities of color everywhere will know that it is possible to defeat these large polluters. We will continue to show that the power of people can overcome the power of money. We know that the road to democracy runs through Richmond and we must keep it running. We have reversed Richmond's downward spiral. We are rising from a history of scarcity and despair with bold and innovative solutions to chronic problems. We're standing strong as a community, courageous and creative enough to define our own destiny. We invite anyone and everyone who shares our commitment to a sustainable future to join us. We have won important victories in Richmond against all odds. Richmond's fate is everyone's fate. A victory in Richmond will be a California victory and a global victory. So thank you so much for your attention and for your values and your vision and all the great work that you do. Together we will win more victories and we will build a sustainable future for generations to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gail. This is the inspiration that we can also look at in our local communities. Uh, I've been so inspired by what Gail has done, and I want to make a little comment here that maybe, um, you know, I almost censored myself, but I'm not going to. Uh, we do have a break coming right now. But I wanted to say something, because I think Gail's independence, her ability to do what she does in Richmond, is partially because she's not in one of the two major parties. She's not pressured by the two major parties and their money. And I think this has made a huge difference in what she's able to do there with the Progressive Alliance. Santa Monica is about to go through the same thing in, in Southern California. They have uh, Mike Feinstein running for mayor, who has been mayor of uh, Santa Monica before, I think for eight years. Uh, and he's also a Green Party member, and his vision for that city is extraordinary, and his history is extraordinary with it. So I think we're seeing some new type of leadership in our cities, and it's very, very exciting. So thank you, Gail.